Hello, everyone. Welcome to the press conference. We are joined by EG, who are coming off of their victory against TRX. Uh, we'll start with a few written questions first, and the first one will start with a clip that will play on the TV. I wonder who it is. You know what? <laughs> Plus, looks to answer oh, back. It's not you. It ain't you. It ain't you, hey, it ain't you buddy. So it interrupts the plan for the time being. 30 seconds left. Umbot now. You think it's to watch what I would do? Yeah. You know that she's oh, a 1-1 yeah. split in this rolling. I'll going to be monstrous. Pushes him off and puts no way. He's gone. He just draws out the knife when he shuts him down. That is so stupid. He <laughs> geniuses up to 10. <laughs> Unbelievable. What a reaction. What a play. <laughs> wow. Right. That was chill. And this question goes to Calm from Brandon at Esports GG. Overall, you had a standout series against DRX. This will probably be the play everyone remembers, though. Just mm -hmm. talk us through the moment and everything leading up to it. Um, Before, when Ethan and I were in a 2v2, it was just like I wanted to break his boom bot, so I ran out of ammo in my stinger because Ethan breach ulted, then I used the rest of my bullets on stacks. And then when it came to the 1v1, I mean, I always have this tendency of just like, if he's close, I just... I don't know. I just go for the knife. It's always been for me, like, I don't know. I guess it's a little troll part of me where I'm just like, I want to just knife this guy no matter what. So <laughs> I guess that's just me. Thank you. And the next question will also follow a clip. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Mitchell, Victoria, uh, check for him. He, he, he was, was there. there. Oh, he's oh, just no it. way. So. <laughs> It's not easier, dude, man, I guess. And, dude, we were just like <laughs> died at the turret. It'd be the like for one, the KJ was super far away from ulti, and it would just be hilarious. <laughs> oh my god, he did not swing. Was so <laughs> bro, he That's didn't know swing. They so. were, bro. <laughs> I didn't know he was bro, there. Oh insane. my god, That's hilarious. Dude. Um, yeah. So this question goes to anyone on EG uh, from Brandon at Esports GG. Just want to hear from anyone on the team their their reaction on watching this back and uh, know what the reaction was like when it happened live. Oh, like literally everyone was just like, "Go die to the turret." Um, the KJ is like the least away from our ulti, so just go die to her. And uh, we we're like, "The turret, just go die to it." And then Corbin finally gave in and did it. <laughs> he didn't want to do it, I mean, I doing, but I kept saying it over and over. I was like, "Just go, go, to the turret, go to the turret." I was like, "Okay, fine." <laughs> it was good. That was a good round. Thank you. Next question goes to Potter from Ganesh at Strafe. Congratulations on your victory. This was the first series you got to play Fracture at Valorant uh, and at Champions, and you continued your dominance on the map. Were you expecting the Lotus pick from them after how close it has been for them? And do you think the map veto favor you? Yeah, the map veto definitely favored us coming in. I really doubted that they were going to pick Lotus. Um, but we knew that if they did, it would just be easy wraps for us. We put in a lot of work on Lotus over the last month. Um, I can't, I, I actually still am shocked that they floated Fracture as well. Um, yeah, the veto definitely did not go the way that I uh, imagined this morning when I woke up. But, you know, Fracture, Lotus, one and two, that, that was as easy as it could be for us. Thank you. Next question also goes to you, Potter, from Ganesh at Strafe. Your next opponent will be Paper Rex, a team who have been catching people off guard with their speed and chaos. Do you have a plan to tackle their speed and aggression? Yeah, you know, I think one of the greatest things about this squad over the last especially two months is all the layers that we've been adding. Um, fighting fire with fire, we definitely have the firepower to do that on this squad. Each of these guys, I mean, they're as aggressive as they come. We've actually been working on not overheating. So I think um, Paper X stylistically is exactly the kind of team we like to face off against. So we're feeling very confident going into that series. Thank you. We'll now transition to remote media questions. Uh, first question from Brandon, Esports GG. Thank you very much. Congratulations on the win. Uh, I guess I'll send this to Bustio, but if anybody else wants to chime in. Uh, finally, you guys got to play Fracture. Um, but now we know that it's actually rotating out of the map pool when Breeze returns <laughs> with the different changes to it. So I'd just like to ask your thoughts on that. Maybe what you feel would be a good replacement, like signature map for EG, uh, and also just any thoughts on the Breeze changes. Yeah, um, it definitely sucks that Fracture is going because we love that map. But, I mean, the Breeze changes looks pretty good, to be honest. I'm kind of excited just to try it out. Um, I just hope they don't add Icebox back 
and Bree, like I have a love hate relationship with Bree, so it doesn't. It'll be fun to try it out, but sucks. Fracture's gone. Thank you, Brandon. Did you have a second question? Uh, yes, thank you. I'll send this one over to Potter. Uh, you know, the start of the year. Uh, you know, obviously before Demon One kind of slotted in. You know, one and four. It wasn't as consistent as we're seeing now. So I just like to ask with. So many victories over, you know, the last couple months in the international tournaments, really only losing to Fnatic. What's the one thing you would attribute to changing the inconsistency to finally being consistent? Ooh, the one thing, huh? <laughs> the one thing. Um, It's tricky, uh, I, but I think it's just time, just the building the trust and time. Um, you know, we've had so many good rounds together that it was just a matter of time before we started realizing exactly how to use each other. And out of all the reps that we've got and all the hard days that we've spent hours and hours dedicating into the game, it just kind of naturally happened. These guys are all very uh, cerebral, mature, uh, dedicated players. And we, we were hungry. We were hungry earlier this year. And so even with all the problems coming our way, we just hunkered down and just worked harder. So that definitely played a role, but I guess it's just a trust. Um, after a lot of time and after you're watching Jogimo just run it down and constantly getting multi-kills and then it's Demon and then it's Corbin and then it's Boosty and then it's Ethan. Each of these guys have stepped up. And so it just kind of inspires each other. Thank you. Are there any on-site media questions? Hi, these are from the Valorant Competitive subreddit. I know the last press conference, we talked a lot about um, Demon 1 and the change from being a uh, duelist to a uh, um, controller. So there's a lot of questions. In fact, all the questions are about Demon 1. Um, so to Potter first. Congratulations on the win today. Uh, we've seen a switch up in your comps recently. Demon One is now playing controller on more maps than before. You know, what's the thought process behind that? And is I don't that like hopping. I was going to say, is it related to the op stuff? Yeah. Yeah, definitely related to the op stuff um, for sure. But it, it's it's tricky to say it, it just comes down to the op. But simply put, it just comes down to the op. Um, we wanted to be able to create as consistent systems as possible. And um, Max not always feeling the op kind of played a role in that. But also Boosty is just such a good opera as well. I mean, you've seen it on KJ. Um, and so I think for the last month, we've just consistently been trying to figure out what all our strengths actually are. And Boosty on the op is one of them. Awesome. And to follow up uh, for Demon 1, uh, you've had a huge jump in performance in playoffs compared to groups and even Tokyo. Is this just good form uh, or did you change something about your decision making? Um, no, I didn't do anything. I'm just playing the game. <laughs> Would you attribute it to you're not opping anymore? Um, I don't think it has an effect. Okay. Opping, I'll be back for sure. <laughs> I, was holding back, but yeah. I think also I'll just piece in. I think um, maybe his stats weren't as good as in Tokyo and like the group stage, but I think if you just like watch him play, he is like the best player in the world or one of the best players in the world. So like it was just unlucky during Tokyo that he wasn't playing to like the peak performance he is right now. And I think he he's very consistent in scrims and his aim's super consistent. So I think it won't be that hard for him to keep at like this level. Awesome. Thank you so much. Any other on-site media questions? All right, that concludes our press conference with EG. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.